Imagine a world without emails, websites, and your favorite YouTube channels. Let's add transaction gateways as well. And that's a world without the internet or servers like this behind me. These are identical GPU servers with both of them having 16 core CPU, 256 GB of DDR5 ECC memory, RTX A6000 with 192 GB of VRAM and 12 terabyte of SSD storage. Ooh. You could probably get the exact same specs on a regular desktop PC. So how are these any different and why should someone spend extra money on these things? That's exactly why we made this video to tell you all the things you need to know about servers. While many of you think servers are just bulky desktop PCs, you couldn't be further from the truth. Servers are primarily made to act as a reliable data operation machine. Every company in the world uses servers somehow. From emails to web services to databases and accounting, all of these activities are happening somewhere in a server. In one sentence, servers are purpose-built for stable performance, scalability, and security. The three most important things for a business. Super important, I might add. Now you might think, even our PCs run 24-7. So how is that any different? Well, these have redundant and hot swappable components which means even if some of the components die a you don't need to shut down a server to replace it b it's replacing as easy as swapping the product and the second difference is their connectivity now desktop pcs are made like towers but servers are designed to be sleek to save space to fill in racks so you can add more servers and connect them to each other and that is why we made two of these servers instead of a regular pc network speeds for desktop pcs max out about 10 gb per second but the speed for servers can hit up to 2000 gb per second and that's not even the fastest so if you could have gone for a regular pc of the same spec instead of a server you could never combine the performance but with servers that's possible. Servers also have something called a WAN port or a remote management port which means your team can be sitting in Timbuktu and doing maintenance like updates without actually being around the server, improving security. Now as servers hold a whole lot of components generating heat and being compact, they have a much higher cooling requirement. As a result, server coolers run at a much higher RPM, making a lot of noise. But this isn't really a big problem as servers are kept in separate rooms with air conditioning. But the server also needs an OS to run. So what's that specific OS? The OS can depend on a variety of factors. And we can broadly say two categories. The first category is a database server, which are servers made just for storing, guess what? So one example is a media agency using a server for handling project files. TrueNAS is a great OS for making a network attached storage for your office. Another example would be handling data for your clients, like a cloud storage or email platform. For these types of products, Microsoft SQL OS is a good option. A second category is a compute server. Yeah, AWS, yeah, we say. Now these are servers that run apps like Midjourney or ChatGPT or any custom app on your browser or through another client. These servers primarily run on Linux for amazing security and good performance in AI applications. Whew. And that was all you needed to know. Probably not, but that was all you needed to know about servers and how they're different from the PCs at your home. So when are you looking to upgrade your business with a server or maybe even a desktop? Tell us in the comments below. Thank you for watching.